This is part two of my LS Swap disassembly series. This will cover removing that 305 boat anchor and other various engine bay components. To start, drain the fuel tank. Trust me, you don't want fuel leaking all over the place. Loosen the fuel lines and catch any fuel that's still in the lines. removing various engine plugs, such as the AC compressor, temp sensor, alternator plug and ground, the MAP sensor, HVAC fan, relays, idle air control, throttle position sensor, EGR, and the various distributor plugs. Remove the throttle cable. Unbolt the battery ground cable on the chassis and the engine block. This block of wires is removed from the front alongside a very small ground wire. All the starter connections are removed. Unbolt the exhaust system at the manifolds and the cap back. This bracket and relays are removed. Remove this random plastic cover and the air injection plugs are removed. The transmission cooler lines are now out of the way. I then removed the engine mount bolts. This is obviously very dangerous as a giant heavy engine is now unbolted. Remove the passenger side kick panel. Pull back the carpet then remove the radio cable and grommet. These plugs can be removed as they won't be used with the LS engine. The fender plug is removed via a plastic retaining clip. Pull the wires through the hole. The HVAC fan is removed to free up a little bit of room for that very thick harness plug. The map sensor can be taken off.
The very important C100 plug is removed via this hidden bolt in between the plugs. The plug is actually two different plugs that come apart. One plug is for the headlights, horn, and a few other things, while the C100 plug has the important engine wiring. The cherry picker is rolled in, a chain and some hooks are attached to the factory engine pickup points. Slowly and carefully remove the engine. This monstrosity weighs quite a bit. Luckily, I managed to remove the engine while only damaging the oil pressure sender. This sad 305 that makes a whopping 122 horsepower weighs in at 595 pounds with the factory intake. For reference, that's 180 pounds more than the Ellis one that's going into this car. The weight jacks were lowered to their minimum height, since the engine removal maxed out my suspension. The fuel lines are removed. The brake master cylinder and proportioning valve are removed. Unplug the windshield wiper motor. Carefully remove the wiper arms. There is a small clip underneath the arm that you have to press before they can come off. Pry up the cowl plastic mesh. The wiper sprayer lines are pulled out, unbolt the wiper motor arm, then unbolt the wiper motor. What's left of the throttle cable is removed from the firewall. I think I might have broken it. The driver's side kick panel is unscrewed. With the kick panel off, the hood latch release mechanism can be removed. Push the cruise control wiring and hoses into the car. The four nuts that hold the seat in place are removed. The cruise control pedal switch are removed alongside the brake light pedal switch. I can't get good shots underneath the dash, so bear with me here. Pull out the cruise control wiring. Unbolt the old heater system hardline. The HVAC box is removed next. It's held in place by a bunch of very small screws.
The evaporator is taken out. The old heater hoses are yanked off. Remove the remaining screws that hold the HVAC box to the firewall. A few of the screws are found underneath the passenger side dash. The HVAC box is fully removed and a ton of room is opened up. The front wiring harness is pulled out. There are a few ground terminals that will have to be unbolted. Make sure to stay tuned for more disassembly content. And as always, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.